They say that the average American owns 300,000 things. But how many of those things do we really need to live our day-to-day -day lives? I had to figure this out while trying to fit my whole life into a carry-on luggage. If you have been following my journey, you know that I'm currently in the process of making an international move, again. Last year, my husband and I moved to Portugal with only five luggages. And during our time there, we barely bought anything since we were renting a fully furnished place. We did invest in a nice espresso machine, a computer chair, and a few small items to make us feel more at home. Thankfully, we were able to sell almost everything to a secondhand store and even got some of our money back. This time, moving from Portugal to Hawaii, I knew the process was going to take a while since it's a bit more complicated to bring my dogs to the islands, which meant I needed to live out of a carry-on during this transitional period. We packed our things into three big boxes a couple of months ago and shipped them to our new place, bringing only the essentials with us. Let me show you what I consider to be my essentials. On this side is my mobile office. I'm truly grateful to be able to work from anywhere, but that also means that I have to bring my work set up with me wherever I go. My camera, tripod, hard drives, and other tech accessories. On the other side are my clothes. Since it's such a long stretch of time, I'm traveling through different seasons. It was still winter when we left Portugal, so I have my big coat, two sweaters, and some long sleeves. I included my linen shirt and lighter tops for San Diego, and eventually I will make it to Hawaii, and it'll be hot, so I have my shorts, tanks, and my two dresses. Other things are my toiletries, makeup, books, life documents. Safe to say, that every inch of this luggage was accounted for. I've been living out of this carry-on for almost three months now, and it's been really eye-opening. I learned a lot about what stuff means to me and about myself. Today, I wanted to share these valuable lessons with you. When I was choosing which things I had to pack in my carry-on, I really had to think about my daily routine and the things that I use on a regular basis. And honestly, I don't think that I could have perfected it because things always happen. For example, there's been so many times where I wish that I had a pair of scissors or an extra pair of sweats, but I've either become really resourceful and found creative ways to kind of go on about it, or I had to just give it up and just kind of go on with my day. In the past, I mentioned how having too much stuff can really become a burden on us, but now I'm realizing that it's also true for the opposite. Having too little can also become a burden. It can be really inconvenient and really costly too. I constantly find myself doing laundry because all of my clothes are dirty all at once and I'm spending a lot of time just trying to navigate my day because I don't have this or that and it's just become a little bit more difficult. I guess I'm mentioning this because when people often discover minimalism, they have this tendency to take things to the extreme and myself included. And then we quickly find out that life just becomes more difficult and it just doesn't become realistic anymore. I think we can all benefit from living a more simpler life, but I think it still has to somewhat work for you and reflect the needs of your daily life. Now, this isn't my forever situation and I'm really grateful because I know that for some people it's just their reality. But I will try to keep this experience in mind when I go to Hawaii and start creating my new home. I don't want to just fill it with things and decorate it to a point where all those things become a burden. But I also don't want to live bare bones where I'm kind of restricting myself from enjoying my house and doing creative hobbies and seeing my home as a sanctuary. The second lesson that I learned is that sometimes we have to minimize in order to maximize in other areas of life. Almost everything in my carry-on is what I consider to be my essential. When it comes down to a specific situation, 
now I know that I can live and work out of this small luggage for however long and it's a really freeing feeling. I feel like I can go anywhere at any time and it's just been one of those invaluable things for me. This doesn't just apply to physical things, but I feel like it's a bigger metaphor for life. I know a lot of people who are kind of stuck in their lives because they can't imagine not having the same income or not living in that nice comfy house, but there are times when we need to drastically cut back, maybe on our budget, scale back on our lifestyles, detach from people to adjust and pursue something better or just different. So I think it's really important to know how to differentiate between what is essential and everything else. Just reflecting on my own situation, if I was not willing to give up some of my comforts and to live in a carry-on, even if it's just temporary, I don't think that I could have moved to Portugal. And I don't think that I could move back to the US. I cut back and actually had to restructure my life completely. But what I gained was so much more and I definitely don't have any regrets. I mentioned in the beginning of the video, but we actually decided to ship three big boxes to our new place in Hawaii because that was somehow more economical. After we had shipped it, we never heard back from this place, no tracking number or no confirmation. So I was getting a little bit worried. <laughs> I was thinking of the worst, of course, what if they lost the package or what if you know it just doesn't make it in one piece? I have my jewelry box that I've had ever since I was like five years old. My wedding albums, you know, some of these things are just irreplaceable. And I was getting a little bit paranoid. A few weeks went by and I started to just kind of realize that if all of these things were to somehow disappear, that nothing in my life would really change. I know it sounds really cliche, but Really, I have my health, my two dogs are here with me, I have my husband and my loving family. All the things that I have in my house or all the things that I own are just an accessory. Some are just more important than others, but ultimately it really doesn't define my life. Well, the boxes made it safely, thankfully, and I can't wait to reunite with them. But. I will never forget that feeling. I never want to just work away my life in order to earn and buy these things because ultimately they really have no true value to our lives. I will say that not everything material is replaceable. You know, there are just sentimental items that mean so much to us, but I also don't want to get so attached to them to a point where it gets in the way of bigger things in life. So to answer my own questions, how many things do we really need in order to live our day-to-day -day lives? Well, I think it really depends for everyone. For me, it's never been about the number, but the role each thing plays in our lives. Ultimately knowing that stuff is just stuff and we shouldn't waste our money acquiring these things that we don't need and we definitely shouldn't center our lives around it. Next time you see me, I will be in Hawaii. I cannot wait. I just wanna say thank you guys so much for following my journey, my crazy journey. And I am so grateful for every single one of you who watch my videos and comment. I really appreciate it. Until next time guys, take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.